despite my inability to properly pronounce the word, I love horror. I live and breathe it. <laughs> I'm the person who reads scary stories to fall asleep at night, who can debate the existence of ghosts with you for hours, they totally exist, and who also knows the best way to stab someone quietly in a little mess. You go up through the diaphragm, not a super bloody place to stab, and also prevents them from screaming, and then through the mouth up into the sock. You kill them almost instantly, and most of the blood just kind of trickles down their throat. I promise you I'm not a psychopath. <laughs> Another thing I love about horror is haunted houses. And I mean those stupid Halloween reenactments. From the low-budget ones put on in garages, to the to Universal's Halloween Horror Nights, to the hard-to-believe-they're-not-illegal extreme ones where they bind you and gag you and waterboard you. I love them all. <laughs> My very first memory of a haunted house is of a dream I had about one in first grade. It was a bastardized mix of the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney and the Eddie Murphy movie about the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney. <laughs> that I held my best friends hostage for an entire week during recess where I forced them to reenact it for me. It was not fun for them because, duh, and it wasn't fun for me because they did an awful job of it. Actors, am I right? So imagine my excitement when in fifth grade, my mom's nurse friend signs us up to do a crisis reenactment in an abandoned building. Well, technically not a haunted house because this is supposed to train actual nurses and paramedics in crisis situations, the 10 year old me couldn't tell the difference. All I knew was there would be fake blood involved and that I would get $25 for my participation, <laughs> which as a 10 year old is a shit ton of money. <laughs> so the day starts and it's my mom, my two younger siblings, my twin best friends, and a bunch of other volunteers. And we're all full of this nervous excitement and I just know it's gonna be legit. And I am proven correct when we're told we will be reenacting a suicide bombing, which to me meant one thing, Fuck yeah. <laughs> that sounds super bloody and awesome. So there's two parts to the preparation of us victims. First, we received the appropriate makeup and lots of fake blood to go with our assigned trauma. God bless my six-year-old brother, who was supposed to have a compound arm fracture, which these not real makeup artists achieved by dousing his entire arm in fake blood and sticking a broken popsicle stick on top meant to be thrown breaking through his skin. He completely missed the point as he very seriously turned to my mother and said, Oh, I get it, because I was eating a cherry popsicle when the bomb went off. <laughs> <laughs> we also received wristbands with an expiration date of sort that would tell us if and when we would die, which was honestly so awesome. Unfortunately, I was not determined a death risk for my injuries, so I just got a plain band. But my twin friends got yellow and black bands, which meant if the nurses didn't reach them within an hour, they would die. Made me a little jealous, but whatever. <laughs> my sister, who was just three at the time, was supposed to already be dead, and my mother was to play the role of the hysterical grieving mother, who was apparently a classic nuisance for first responders. So my mom was fake crying and screaming that her daughter was dead, while my sister was real crying and screaming that she wasn't dead. <laughs> Let me repeat that. She was three. This was traumatizing. <laughs> questionable on the part of this operation, I might say, but then again, the suicide bomber was a 10-year-old girl in pigtails and a fake bomb vest, yeah. so I don't think ethics, or realism for that matter, were very high on the priority list here. I was supposed to have a skull fracture, which I was told would cause me to be confused and unable to follow directions. I was told I could listen to the nurses if it took me somewhere, but if they left me alone for any amount of time, I should try to get up and wander off. That was my assignment, and I was committed to it. So I start the reenactment off in a wing of the building by myself. 15 minutes pass and nothing happens, which is not at all satisfying my thirst for carnage and drama. This is quickly becoming the most boring suicide bombing in the history of the universe. And since I'm not having any fun, I decide to go off in search of other people or some sort of action because so far I'm very unimpressed. Luckily, my change of scenery does the trick because some nurses finally find me. I act all scared because I've just been in a bombing and my head hurts because it's fractured. But the nurses are super nice as they lead me into triage. But it's chaos, right? So they tell me to sit and stay while they go get their supplies. And so, because I listen to instructions, I get up and wander off. <laughs> but they don't, it doesn't take very long before they find me and tell me it's really important that I sit and stay. But then they leave again, so I get up again. And then they get angry. 
And this is the moment where the illusion of fun is completely shattered because I become full on confused. Not fake confused like I'm supposed to be, but actual crisis level of conscience confusion. I have been told two very different pieces of information by two very different adults, and my little brain doesn't know how to compute. Maybe this is what an actual skull fracture feels like because I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. So naturally, I ask another adult who happens to be another one of the nurses. So one of my symptoms is supposed to be like this confusion and inability to follow instructions. Like I was literally told to get up and wander off, even if you tell me to sit and stay, but now you've said that several times and I don't know if you're like saying that as like someone who would say that in this situation, or you're like telling me to sit and stay as like a person, not like an actor. <laughs> and she just looks at me like I'm crazy and repeats, you need to sit and stay, which is wildly unhelpful. And turns out me sitting there, questioning the rules of the universe, and my own goddamn sanity at the ripe old age of 10 was for nothing because these nurses were awful. Everyone with the ticking clock died. They didn't find the suicide bomber for like three hours. And apparently everyone forgot about my twin friends because the thing had been over for at least an hour before they emerged from the building wondering if it had ended yet. <laughs> because the door to the room they were in was locked and after trying the handle, the nurses just gave up and left them there. I got my $25, but it didn't even feel worth it at that point. It was like a sad participation trophy for being a part of the worst reenactment ever. <laughs> and you know what the worst part of the whole thing was? Skull fractures don't even bleed. <laughs> I didn't get a single drop of fake blood, which was the whole point of the thing to begin with. No one died in a spectacular rain of blood and carnage. They died because these so-called healthcare professionals were so incompetent and couldn't even answer a simple question from a 10-year-old. So the moral of the story is, if you're ever in a bombing in Knoxville, Tennessee, good luck. Because those <laughs> nurses are going to do jack shit for you. <laughs> and I guess the other moral is that playing pretend is a marvelous thing. But keep your expectations very low, because I guarantee you everyone will disappoint you. <laughs> then again, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Because I'm the person who made a compromise with the demon living in my closet, and who once researched sociopaths by talking to them on the internet. You guys enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm going to go call my therapist. <laughs>